We are live, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks very much for joining us for another Elite Coach Live. Joined by the main man himself, Brendan. How are we keeping, mate? Good morning. I've got a beautiful black coffee. You'll appreciate that this morning. So, um, yeah, all well. All all is well. How about you? Yeah, not bad, mate. Not bad. Living the dream. It's been a it's been an interesting week, but uh, you know, we just we 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 march on and soldier on. But first and foremost, for people. Uh, we apologise for being uh, AWOL last last week. Brendan was taking some much needed downtime with the family getting away. And uh, I was taking a bit of a leave of absence just because I wasn't very well. So, you know, nobody wanted to see me on Elite Coach Live when I'm not very well. It's bad enough we, at the we best of time. You see, and, uh, <laughs> are you feeling better now? Uh, that's Yeah, I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. It's been, been a weird one because... You know, when you don't get ill for ages, you kind of don't know what to do with yourself. You're like, mm. oh, I just want to, I just want to get on and do stuff. And the body's going, no, you're not. Like, you're like, but I'm fine. It's all in my head. No, nah, you're not really. <laughs> so, no, I mean, I mean, it, 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 it's like you're one of the only people I think would be sort of. They get they get COVID and they're sort of like, I'm gonna I'm gonna see how hard I can train. Through COVID, I'm going to see what records I can break. Like no, nobody's competing for kettlebell championships with COVID. It, it's almost like you you can set a new benchmark, can't you, for doing that? <laughs> exactly, mate. We're we're all competing in a category of one, and I'm just looking for new categories. You know, yeah, sure. So, yeah, but yeah. yeah, it's certainly certainly been an interesting one. Uh, bit really really bizarre. Um. Just started off with like a fever and uh, I mean, you know, hot and cold, nothing you can do. You just feel like rubbish and that's it. Um, and that was just like, yeah, OK, no worries. But it's just the after effects of like, this is just so bizarre, mm. really, really weird. And I probably jumped in a bit too early. So I, I thought, right, I'm fine. I'm going to go on the spin bike. Nothing major. I'm talking. I did 10 minutes super steady. And then I did um 10 seconds hard 60 seconds recover all within my heart rate honestly it was the hardest session i've ever done in my life i thought really who's put sand in my water bottle it was just like ah oh, this is just awful <laughs> and the rest of the day i was like this is just not normal <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah you see that's where i've got a little edge on you because i've got a few more years in the uh in the book so to speak and um I'd say that's one of the things that I'm not great at it, but one of the slightly th improvements that I've made is listening to my body over the last few years. And I've um, managed to sort of avoid getting ill when previously I would have just done that session. Because the thing is, when, when it comes to getting ill or getting worse, it's like one mistimed session is all it takes. Yeah. You know, especially when you push yourself hard in your work, in your training, and in general, literally just one missed time session. It's at wrong time of day, wrong intensity, wrong duration, you know, or just doing the session. Mm -hmm. You know, that is all it takes. And then you're like, yeah, I'm done. I'm now in that vortex that takes me into being ill for, you know, a week. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm certainly not perfect, but it sounds like I'm a little bit better than you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're setting the bar low, though, mate. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's but, very you true. Know, I, it, it's just, I, I think it's a, it's a weird one, trying to get a handle on, on the fatigue, you know, because mm. literally it blindsides you. You know, sometimes yeah. when you're not 100%, you sort of, it creeps up and you're thinking, okay, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm getting tired now. And now it's more like just, uh, you're done. So somebody just comes in the room and just says, "Right, you're done," and just knocks you, no, yeah. knocks you back, you know. And it's um, just so bizarre, really, really strange. So, but you know, we 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 march on, you know. We focus on what we can control. I yeah. must say, even though I'm not a hundred percent, I delivered hands down the best immersion session ever last night. Really, I was sort of sinking there, and do you know what it was? It was a mindset shift, and I was like, oh, "I'm really tired here. I'm really feeling a bit 
this is going to be a slog. This is going to be a challenge. Like, just get through it, Ste- get through it. And then I just went, no, no, you're not going to just get through it. You're going to bring the fire. You're going to get it. People are tuning up. They're giving up their time. So it's on you to deliver. Snap yourself out of it. And, mm. yeah, I was on fire, mate. I was on fire. Yeah. Anybody who watched last night's immersion session, if you could just back up, because Brendan's like, yeah, whatever, Steve, whatever. But if you yeah, can back me up in the comments section, if you watched last night's immersion session, drop them in the comments and just please stroke my ego a little Reinforce bit. Reinforce what you're saying. I think you should, if you're listening and you, you you were in on it last night, just, just comment and just say, what are you talking about, Steve? You were nowhere. You were nowhere, mate. <laughs> but um, for those of you watching that haven't been on an immersion session yet, just give a snapshot while we're on this theme of what we're covering on these sessions, Steve, because they are powerful, aren't they, as a as a whole? Absolutely. And I, and I think I, I say it all the time is like these immersion sessions are part of SCE's promise to anybody who comes involved with SNC education, anybody who sort of put the hand up and said, I'm going to back myself, I'm going to invest in myself and take my coaching knowledge further. So these immersion sessions, we cover a variety of things, but it's all about filling in the gaps. So last night we were chatting about PT versus being an SNC coach and what's the differences and what's the sort of level changes that you will go through as you sort of progress through your PT career and start going into strength and conditioning. And it was a really, really good one because a lot of people were like, I don't really know how to use s and c with general population you know the the usual that we get and i was like it's absolute nonsense it's just it's just complete and utter rubbish if you're saying i just work with general population i don't need to learn about strength and conditioning because that's for athletes you're doing yourself and you're doing your clients a massive disservice you take the principles of strength and conditioning but you take the principles and you take the mindset shift that comes with it and you start applying that with whatever clientele you're working with, and you will start seeing better results, better coaching outcomes, and you will feel better as a coach 100% as well. So that's what we really dug into last night, and how can you take the principles and apply it to 40-year-old Barbara from the local hairdressers or 12-year-old Johnny, who's the up-and-coming football superstar, whatever it may be. It's all about the principles and the systems taking that and applying it in a creative way of your coaching style and and ultimately that's what we we try and do every single month we deliver this month we're delivering free immersion sessions so these are for anybody within the level four on our, our, our graduates as well you get access to these and we just we've talked about movement strength and power developing that we've talked about the six steps to designing elite resistance training programs talk about injuries or opportunities, cover a whole host of topics that allow coaches just to constantly refine, reflect, and constantly sharpen the saw, you know? So I really enjoy them. I love delivering them because they're just fantastic and we get some great interaction from them. Yeah, brilliant. That's it. And um, I think that whole difference thing is is huge because, I mean, that's, that's what this company is founded on and, you know, uh, you'll remember from back in the day, Steve, that, that we we brought people together for these these weekends, and it was always what I would say is you'll you'll come into this weekend a trainer and you'll leave a coach, and I don't mean that in any way in an elitist way or in any way to put down the personal training profession or the term personal training because it's not that, and I and I actually don't care what you call yourself or how you define yourself. But I do think that my the key thing for me is that coaching has so much to offer, as does mentoring. But coaching as a profession and the depth of that is is so, so powerful that we do it an injustice by not focusing on that. And um, And I think that in general, it has the transformational effect that you do owe it to yourself and your clients to dig deep into coaching and becoming a a very well-rounded coach, somebody who can ask questions and think at a higher level. And and I think we touched on it in the last weeks or last times ECL when we talked about, you know, 
you get you get taught, but it's almost like the reverse, the wrong way around. Sometimes you get taught how to to do an exercise, to teach an exercise, but you don't get that taught how to coach the exercise, let alone coach the person in front of you, let alone coach yourself. And they're three moving targets. And the skill and the art in this is aligning those things so everybody moves forward together. And um, and that takes time. That takes time to do that. And that's why you see people like Kelvin Giles, who's won our Lifetime Achievement Award last year at the, the SCE Awards. He's still going. You know, and the guy's, the guy's probably in his 70s. No, he's got to be in his 70s. He's certainly high, high 60s, but I think probably low 70s. He's still sharpening the saw. You know, he's still trying to refine his his language, his coaching practice. It never stops. And I think really that, for me, that is, that's what we're talking about here. It's, it's a commitment to coaching at a high level mm. as opposed to just teaching and instructing. So, yeah, you know, it's exciting. And uh, if you haven't checked out one of Steve's sessions, you should do. And um, you can probably give him a bit of stick on the on the line as well, because uh, we all need that, don't we? Still have to have the F word is always got to be in there. Fun. <laughs> well, Ace was online last night, and he, he he's backed me up, and he said it was fire. So I'll I'll take that. Absolutely take that. You know. Good man. Um, Good man. And I think Ace again backs up exactly what you say. Personal training coaches don't teach you how to coach. Uh, that's a key thing. And I think I think it's I think it's interesting. I think the big thing for me is is the word that you mentioned there, Brendan, was that commitment. And it is it is a commitment when you are when you're getting into the coaching profession. You've got to commit. It's and it's not something I'll just play about with. You just commit to becoming a great coach. You're committing to serving the person that you're going to be working with. Because ultimately, if you don't make that commitment, you lose out, but the people that you serve and lose out. And, and nobody wants that because who benefits from bad coaching? Nobody benefits from bad coaching. Arguably, it's it's the good coaching is part like here and the bad coach is way down here. You have to spend so much time undoing bad coaching. I've come across quite a few um youth athletes and people who've had such bad experiences with coaching in the past and it takes you ages to get them back just to an even keel to a baseline of going right now we can start the work you're changing their terminology you're changing the language you're changing the way they view things you're trying to undo the the way parents perceive coaching and stuff and it's bad coaching there's just no place for it but it, obviously, you've got to make that commitment and say, "I will become a great coach," mm. and it's a long, it's a life lifetime commitment. It yeah. really yeah. is. Yeah. Well, yeah, but the, 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 you've always got at least one client, which is yourself, and um, you can commit to improving yourself. But I think the the other thing is, it's it's this is nothing to do with fitness, strength, and conditioning. This is to do with everything, and. Um, you know, I, I, I mix in different circles, of, you know, the, from the business side of things. And, you know, I'm an ambassador for the Institute of Directors in West Yorkshire. And pe people often would refer to me or, or think of me as a business person, a business owner, a, an entrepreneur, whatever you want to call it. And, and they'll say, what do you, and I, and I often, very, very often come back to, you know, I, I actually am a coach. I'm a coach. And then their mind flicks back to, oh, what is it, sport? What do you, you know, this and that? It's like, no, 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 no. No, I'm just a coach. And I can work with anyone at any realm in any facet. And I I think that's really what it is for me. It's 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 a wide it's a wider profession and um and sort of skill set and mindset than simply how do we get somebody squatting better in the gym. That's 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 an expression of coaching, mm -hmm. but it isn't being a coach necessarily. It's it's part of that. So yeah, it's it's a fascinating subject, and um, you know, one that we could chat for a long, long time on. But but you know, I think with the message is there, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I don't know who Facebook user is, but I guess the benefit of imposter syndrome is you're always trying to be better. Drop the imposter syndrome. 
just, if you've got syndrome, get a cream for it. Just, I, I, I'm, I'm calling you out. I that last syndrome. week, didn't you? <laughs> I did. I did. You're just always trying to be better anyway. There's no such thing as imposter syndrome. You feel like a fraud. Where That's your perception. Just accept, take ownership. And that's one of the things we're going to be chatting about shortly in setbacks. Take ownership of this is where I am now and this is where I want to be. I'm not there yet. I'm not entire. I'm not Hi, Rosie. scared by it or anything like that. I'm just working towards I am who I am. I know what I know. And I'm making that commitment to becoming better. You're not an imposter. Not at all. So drop it. Sorry. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, but let's, jump, let's let's kind of jump straight into it. So coming back from setbacks, and obviously this week has been a perfect one just to sort of set the scene for myself coming back from injury, somebody who's used to just plowing through and smashing it all the time and, and just doing it. And then obviously there's just kind of a, this big interruption of, whoa, take a step back. You're ill. You can't do it. You know, and it's it's weird. How do you come back from that? Because you start telling yourself a little bit like I've just said, you start telling yourself these stories of, oh, it's just too far away. I, I, oh, man, I've just lost everything, lost all my momentum. I'm never going to be able to get back to how I was before. And you start conjuring up all of these stories and these thoughts. But you've got to look at, first and foremost, what is the meaning of setback? The meaning of setback is a is an interruption in progress. It's an interruption. It's not permanent. It's just an interruption to progress. And setbacks come in many different forms. They come in illness. They come in business. I know, Brendan, you've had many of them. They come in the form of injuries or whatever it may be. But they're not permanent. So whenever you catch yourself being down on yourself or manifesting these things bigger than what they are, First and foremost, what is a setback? It's an interruption of progress. And an interruption of progress is only short term. It's like roadworks. Roadworks aren't permanent, although sometimes on highways, England, on the A1, they seem like they're bloody permanent. But it is literally an interruption of progress. So it's not permanent. So first and foremost, if you are experiencing a setback now, I want you to think of it that way. It's just an interruption of progress. That's all it is. So mm. that's that's my first part on it anyway. Mm, mm. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. That that's totally the right mindset. And um you know, I, I often look at it, I think like why why should you not have setbacks? Why should it be perfect? Or why should it be linear? And uh I think it's a bit naive to program your life in a way that you think it's just gonna go in a straight line. You know, if, if if Matt Matt Lovell, one of my friends in the space and and a, a, a prominent nutritionalist, always said, you know, when you when you're dieting, if you're trying to lose weight or gain muscle or whatever it may be, you're going to have some slips. You're going to have some bad periods of time, and and not just slips either. You you some people would literally have three months of terrible eating and then go back, you know, and so. We should plan for that in the it's not going to be linear. And, you know, I, I think worst case conditioning is something that's always helped me about these things of like, what, what is the what is the worst that can happen here? You know, um, it's really scary when when that worst case conditioning is something to do with, say, health or something like that. So this is not an easy thing to go through. But when it comes to business, when it comes to training when it comes to achievement in life you know this this setback it, it's 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 quite an easy task to to set yourself to say look what is the worst here can i handle this worst case condition um you launch your product and no one shows up you put some money into a certain venture and it doesn't particularly work or it doesn't go as you want it to you um you do a, a public speaking event and it doesn't go as you want it to. What's the worst that can happen there? And then you can flip that then into, well, actually, what what a great lesson. Like you might, you, you know, we've talked about this before, Steve, haven't we? Of like MBAs these days, a good MBA course costs 20,000, 
So mm. fifty thousand pounds, depending on which university and which establishment you go. So you know, twenty grand on an MBA. Well, if you spend five grand on launching a website and a project and it absolutely bombs, that's probably better than that MBA cost you because yeah. you've got that as a primary learning locked in. Imagine how you can evolve from that and you've only spent quarter of that investment and ultimately it's not completely wasted at yeah. all. So, yeah, I think I think for me it's it's planning in that there will be little blips in the road you will get ill you know mm -hmm. we we are we are dynamic beasts in nature aren't we we are not robots we are not linear mm -hmm. species we are a dynamic species that does undulate all the time that's that's why we have periodization and we try and take advantage of peaks and troughs in adaptation cycles because that's what happens and if mm -hmm. you don't have the trough you don't have the peak so I think it really does mess up your mindset if you don't plan or expect to just have a few bumps in the road at the very least, and sometimes even more than that, Steve, you know? Mm, yeah, yeah. And I think what comes with anything that we do in life is there's always going to be a certain amount of pressure. And Tim Tim Grover says, says it really, really well, is, is pressure is a privilege. So pressure is a privilege. If if somebody outside a coach or in, in your own training or whatever it may be, if somebody's putting you under pressure, it's because they believe in the skills and the tools that you've got. You know, if, if nobody's putting you under pressure and you're not putting yourself under pressure, then what are you doing? You're staying comfortable. Arguably, you're going backwards because you're not taking that step forward. And that's something that we say at SE all the time. It's just constant movement forward. It doesn't matter if it's a mile or an inch or a millimeter, as long as it's forward progress every single day. So like Bre you just said there, Brendan, expect that. There's going to be setbacks. There's going to be bumps in the road. But expect there's going to be lots of pressure. And relishing that, relishing the fact that pressure is a privilege, because when do we feel pressure? When do when do we when do we feel like it's generally when we've got ourselves out of a comfort zone? We've put a bit more weight on the bar than what we're used to. So you're like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get out of this hole, or we're going to get pinned to the the bench press or whatever it may be, or we're learning about Facebook ads and algorithms and how to set up landing pages, and it feels a bit. Oh, what about this and this? And it feels really uncomfortable. I'm not right yet. Maybe I should just go back and, and not launch this product. But actually, you need to capture it and go, this is a privilege because there's so many people out there that don't put themselves under pressure, don't get themselves out of the comfort zone and constantly stay comfortable in every single thing that they do, whether that be training, whether that be in life, whether that be in their career all of these things but so whenever you're experiencing setbacks and the pressure that comes out of it it's pressure is a privilege because you've earned the right you're pushing yourself and you're getting new skills off the back of it mm. Mm. yeah no i think that's really well put and it's your mind preparing you for the impending work challenge endeavor that you're looking to undertake and and where you want to be in life and that's again it's a human trait to 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 push for more and so really the the, the game here is listening to that emotion but actually hearing the message for what it is it's telling you to just do the work to get prepared mm -hmm. to, to go through the motions it's not telling you to run away it's not telling you to avoid what that is it's telling you to just just concentrate this is real this is proper this mm -hmm. needs to be done well and um and i think that's a message that gets really misconstrued because we often look at it and think shit i need to turn my back on this and run instead of what is this really telling me what is this really telling me and mm -hmm. um, and I, I always look at that and think because i i feel like you know lots of people have have i'm sure have tons more pressure than i do but I feel a lot of pressure in certain certain tasks and things like that and have done for many, many years. And I kind of look at that and think, well, how great is that story going to be then in 
you know, a month, a year or 10 years or more that you can then look back on that period of time and think, yeah, that was really tough, but this happened. And it will mm -hmm. never be what you think is going to happen at the time when you're sitting there on a, on a Friday night, you know, thinking it through. But it's it's the story that af that comes afterwards that you, you can be proud of, isn't it? We're getting a little bit sort of righteous here, but it's like, that's cool. That's what it's about, isn't it? Yeah. You want to be able to look back at that and think, yeah, no, I navigated that. I needed some help here. That was really tough. It didn't go exactly what I, I thought at all. But now we're in this place and that's great. We've got a different vantage point now mm -hmm. where we're going to go now. You know, that's mm -hmm. what it's all about, isn't it? absolutely absolutely and i think sometimes there will be setbacks which just feel like they have pushed you off the edge of a cliff and you are back to square one you know and there's sometimes when you look at it and you go man i was not expecting that you know you, you, maybe it's you fall out with a business partner you, you have a, a bad business deal but brenda mentioned it earlier maybe you had an investment that goes wrong all of these things and you're thinking this is a tough one to take you know we've all been there things have set us back and it's like i was certain this is going to work but it's a massive setback so it's how do you handle that when that that happens you know so i'm just going to share a few of my things and brendan i'll get your thoughts on it so when you do it guys if you're listening in just comment about if you're going through a setback now you've been through one you're feeling there might be one comment below and let's 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 throw that around a bit as well steve but but um be get good to get your thoughts as well yeah yeah absolutely just just comment guys because we're, we're here to serve you guys i said that last night on the on the call it's all about how can we help you so when you hit a setback there's a few things that you need to do we mentioned it a few few uh a few weeks back in terms of data driven you just need to pause and just analyze and reflect of what what's just happened here what has just happened and then once you've got all of the pieces, you've grabbed the data, you've got the facts and you've packed the emotion for a little bit. And it's not the this is the worst thing in the world, anything like that. It's just right. What has actually happened? Let's get some clarity on on this situation here. There's a few things of once you've got that, then you start to take ownership. And the biggest thing for me, every time I've gone through a setback or something's happened especially when it comes to business side of things this is what i'm talking about now is you've always got to take ownership because it will do you no good saying ah oh, well it never worked because this guy screwed me out of money and they stole the deal and all of this kinds of stuff and it happens you know you lose money in investment and it's never a great things you've just got to stop look at what it is and take ownership and go in it, this this is on me now in terms of how am I going to react? First and foremost, I think that's the most important thing. If you do go, if you are going through a setback, just stop, take the emotion out of it, look at the data, look at what has actually happened, and then own that setback. Actually, really, really take ownership of it and not hide away from it, but take the ownership of it. That's the first thing that I would say when it when you get through a setback. I don't know if you'd agree with that, Brendan. Definitely. Yeah, you you want to you actually want to look at what is actually happening properly happening get the evidence get the data try not to distort it mm. and sometimes you need to bounce ideas off or, or thoughts off other people for that yeah but um you know very often when things aren't going right we distort it and we make it even worse don't we so yeah. the first thing is to to try and see what is happening through the right lens that, and not adding filters and so on and so forth yeah absolutely and then like i say i think once you've grabbed ownership, then you're at the wheel. You you know exactly right. How am I going to navigate around this? Because I've I've taken ownership of the setback, and now it's on me to get around it and get back onto the progress. Remember, setback is just an interruption of progress. So right, how are we going to get back to progressing forward? I might be a million miles away from where I thought I was, but as long as I'm starting to progress again. I've taken ownership of the issue, right? I'm back on the journey. Let's make some progress. And it might be small, real, real small little steps every single day. But you've already been up there. You've already been this part of the mountain. You've already had the skill set to get up to there. 
So you're not having to do exactly the same as what you did before to get there. You can speed it up a little bit. It's like when you get an injury, somebody who's got a really good training history, and I'm sure you've seen it many times, Brendan, when you've seen it and they just bounce back from something or they start getting under the bar and they just progress at a rate of knots because it's already ingrained the movement patterns in there. It's just muscle re-education. It's just developing that work capacity again and getting back onto it. You know, if in business, if you suffer a setback, you lose your gym, COVID last year, I know it locked, knocked a lot of investments out and stuff. You already had this skill set to get to the top or to get to your perceived success point. You haven't lost that skill set. You've taken ownership, right? I just need to get back on the horse and start moving forward again. I've got the skill set. I know I can do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's a real interesting relationship between experience and energy. And um, in a sense, they're sort of inversely correlated. Not, not entirely, but when you think about it, you think, the more experience you've got, very often the older you are, that makes sense, right? And um, and then potentially the less energy you've got. The younger you are, the more energy you've got, the more drive to achieve you've got, the less experience you've got. And so experience gives you efficiency, it gives you confidence, and you, you know that, You've been there before, as you said, Steve. You you may have been to the top of the mountain, so you might have had a setback. Maybe lots of people have, have financially had implications in the last couple of years, but they were at that mountain or a certain part of the mountain, so they know they can get back. And certain things need to change, and you've got the skill set. But even if you are on the way up that mountain, you've never been there, and you've got a temporary blip, a temporary setback. And it's knocked you off your perch a little bit. Yeah, you know, if you're on your way up, you've got the energy then. You've got the drive. And let me tell you this, the people that have got the experience, they're desperate for the energy. They're ab absolutely. But the, you employ people who've got the energy. They've got the hunger to drive you up. If you're at the lower side of that mountain and you're still on your way up, You've got the energy, but you're desperate to have the knowledge. Mm. And that's where coaching, mentoring, and the whole cycle's linked in here. So the reality is you've got to use your attributes. You've got to use your traits. And that could be that you are absolutely hungry, driven, and motivated to race. But maybe you need to listen to people who've got a little bit more experience, reach out. And if you've got that experience, you need to get people in who can help you that have got the energy that can break through the barriers and so on and so forth. Mm. So this game is really about how best to get to where you want to go, utilizing your personal skills, but outsourcing or leveraging otherwise. And, and partnerships and business partners are key for that, aren't they, Steve? Yeah, yeah. If if in doubt, leverage it out. As somebody said, I can't remember who said that, but it it is so true, isn't it? You know, um, we we talk about the mission based coaching. Um, FYI, guys, that's a live check out on our Black Friday offer, and that'll be coming to you very very soon. Fantastic course, uh, some great content, and it's exactly what we do. But we talk about mission based coaching and the subsystems within that that surround uh, the mission. And sometimes you won't have, you, you can't anyway, you can't have all of your energy just spreading out from the center and just bleeding into all different areas because it's just not reasonable, you know? So sometimes there's going to be certain areas of your life where you're just going to have to accelerate and going to have to focus a bit. And then there's other areas, if you feel like you're lagging, but you only have a finite amount of energy, that's when you'll get somebody in to give you the ideas to do the doing. Sometimes the biggest thing that I can advise for a lot of coaches is, is just get a virtual admin assistant. Just get a VA, just get somebody to do, do your admin for you for the sake of 15, mm. 20 quid an hour. Just get somebody to, they love that. They've got the drive, they've got the energy so you can focus on different areas, you know? So it really is true. You've only got a finite amount of energy. We're like a, 
you like your phone battery every single day right you know yes you can put a power pack you can put a few things in but generally it's going to die it's only got certain amount. but if you've got all of the apps open what happens your battery goes down quicker mm. and brendan you know this if one of the kids has got it and they're playing whatever <laughs> the battery goes down a lot quicker if there's loads of yeah. things happening in the background it just drains a lot quicker and and it's exactly the same exactly the same yeah i i need my my charge up a bit more regularly than i used to now i think my battery has slightly deteriorated <laughs> but that's all right as long as you recognize it and YouTube, <laughs> youtube definitely thinks that i have a sort of adult fascination with trucks as well right now every suggestion at the moment is trucks and uh, lorries and so on and so forth so you know but it's quite funny when people look over my shoulder and they're like oh you're uh yeah, no, interesting YouTube viewing habits. <laughs> yeah. A mixture of Joe Rogan's podcast and trucks. It's a it's a combination to die for, mate, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but no, some great comments here, guys. Really appreciate your input, everybody. And um, you know, Kyle, uh, you started another business, and so coaching took a, a back seat, so to speak. But coming back, and it's given you a newfound love for it. And I suppose that's. What I'd say to you is actually, it's 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 putting coaching above everything, isn't it? And actually, what you, you'll be coaching in the new business as well, even mm. if it's completely different. Even it, it could be the most different business. Coaching runs through everything, doesn't it? Coaching is a philosophy, and and I think if you embrace it and educate people around you on that as well, it, it seeps through into the roots and the culture of everybody that you work with, which is really, really cool at the end of the day, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So in fact, I'm just reading the comments guys. It's, it's, it's really, really good. Um, you know, makes sense. Batteries seem to, to last only half of the week. And then, then, then I feel tired and unmotivated. And I think that's interesting. So if we continue with a phone analogy, because who doesn't love an analogy, you're not a coach if you don't use an analogy, right? But if if you feel like your battery is draining or if you feel like you're losing that energy, you're losing the motivation halfway through the week, just just stop. Why, why is that happening? Is there other areas? Are you getting distracted? Are you trying to do everything at the beginning of the week and just caning yourself? Or do you need to stop and go, actually, that isn't the focus right now. I just need to focus on this. I need to get this project over the line. And it's the same as with our phone. We just say, right, I don't need to be on Facebook. I don't need to be on Instagram. I don't need my WhatsApp notifications going off. I don't need YouTube in the background. You can just shut it all off, save your battery on the job that is in hand that you're wanting to do. And so if you feel like you're running out halfway through the week, just stop. Why, why does that happen? Why does that? Are you trying to do too much? And chances are, from experience, it's because you're trying to spread yourself too thin and you're trying to do too many things at once. But also, Steve, I'd, I'd say with it, in addition to that is, you know, the world is full of like try and optimize your habits and it's not okay to need a recharge halfway through the week. But I think the game is listening to yourself, mm. listening to your body. And if you need to, to take half a day out on a Wednesday afternoon, then do it. Or, or go to bed at, at eight o'clock, you know, put the kids to bed and go to bed at 8 p.m. And, and then, you know, you'll be recharged in a different way, whatever works for you. You know, we don't need to be listening to, you know, every single Facebook ad that tells us that we can extract another 0.1% of energy out, out of it. It's like, no, you know, the, it's a cliche, but it's the whole, we're trying to do everything too fast. We're trying to do everything this month and this year. But look at what you can achieve in 10 years when you move forward inch by inch. It's the whole overestimating what you can do in one year and underestimating what you can do in 10. And mm. uh, and Phil, you know, you've been a part of what we do in the past and, and still now, great to see you on the line. 10-year journey there. 10-year journey, 2011, many, many setbacks. But look at the stories you've got to tell and, how inspiring that is for your new clients and the people that are coming through your process. And uh, it makes you a better version of yourself, doesn't it, at the bottom line? And you're still there, still driving, still leading people and, and serving them. 
So well played, mate. That's great. Awesome comments. Really, really good. I think, guys, like I say, hopefully uh, you've took a lot from that. I think the, the key things are is setbacks. They are temporary interruptions to progress. So that's all they are. They're not permanent. It's not the world's going to end. You've still got the skills. You've still got the knowledge. You just need to try and find a way of taking ownership and then getting back onto that path to progress. And if you are feeling very jaded, if you are feeling like you are constantly just moving through, wading through water all of the time and not moving further forward, just stop and say, right, is this actually what I need to go through right now? I just sometimes need to embrace the suck and just get it done. Or do you need to give yourself a bit of a break and say, actually, working seven days a week, 12, 13, 14 hour days is not sustainable in the long term. I'm actually losing out. I'm trying to sprint my way through there, but actually I'm just not effective and it's going to cost me further down the line. So I think that's kind of the, the key things that I want to share from today's talk for you guys. All right. Brilliant, mate. Thanks for that, Steve. And um, give us some feedback, guys. Was this session useful? Comment below. What did you get from it? Um, your your feedback is our fuel here. This is we 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 need your feedback, just like you do with your own clients when you're coaching them. You need the feedback so you can improve and refine and adapt to move forward. So yeah, appreciate everybody's time. And um, if you got any ideas, topics for future sessions that you'd like Steve and I to cover. Again, comment below or give us some feedback on that. And uh, like Steve said, we're here to serve you guys. So we can help you in a better way, more impactful way, more specific way. Let us know. Absolutely. Absolutely. And guys, if you haven't seen, we are doing some amazing stuff on Black Friday offering at the moment with the deal of the day. Uh, some fantastic resources at some ridiculously low prices. So if you do feel like you want to sharpen the saw in your technical knowledge or in business or in your self-development, really do check out um, some of the offerings that we've got on for Black Friday. So I know a lot a lot of people have been taking advantage of the Olympic weightlifting, yeah. the online coaching masterclass and stuff as well. Uh, there's loads of stuff in there, so make sure that you do check it out. Yeah, um, that's it. And there's tons going on. It's a big month and uh, a good time for you to, to pick something up for your own knowledge. So think about what areas you need to work on. Is it the strength and conditioning side, mindset, business? And um, if you've got any thoughts or questions, drop us the or I a message. I had a couple of people have messaged me yesterday and today asking about certain things, certain products that they're particularly interested in. So, you know, if you need any guidance, you know where we are. Good stuff, good stuff. And we'll finish on this comment. Why? Because it strokes my ego, Brendan. It tells you how great you are. Exactly <laughs> that, exactly that. But Ro Rosie, I am here, and I'm only here because of uh, Brendan's gave, gave me the opportunity to do so. So always, every time you compliment me, it's a compliment to Brendan as well. So there we go. So oh, guys, God. enjoy the rest of your weekend. It's Friday, isn't it? <laughs> enjoy the rest of your weekend whatever it is you're getting up to guys if you need anything reach out we've got your back as always because se is all about accelerating your success so have a good one guys brendan have a great weekend mate great to catch up great to get your thoughts again thanks and everyone enjoy we'll speak soon lots of love everybody take care